Hello, hello, my friends. Welcome to another episode of Call Me Crazy with Shiri Gabriel. And I have one of the most <laughs> special guests that I've had so far. And the reason she's so special is because of who she is, first of all. But to me, she is my childhood friend. We have been friends for years. Listen carefully. And we will not count them, right? We, we, we <laughs> no. Will avoid well, I was them. just going to say, though, Miriam, I was going to say, but we didn't see each other or even speak to each other for close to 30 years. Yes. Well, Is it safe yeah. to say? Yes. Right. <laughs> okay. 25. Fine. Fine. Yes. Since we were two. <laughs> <laughs> But this is this is the nice and the most beautiful thing is that the love that we have for one another is there. And um, life brought us together personally, professionally. Um, we have been collaborating for a couple of years now, elevating one another, supporting one another, cheering on each other. <laughs> and um, we, yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing because listen, the love is still there. And this is why, you know, we're, we're here. And this is why um, I asked Dr. Z oh. <laughs> to be here with me so uh, she can share the wonderful things that she's doing. And I got to tell you, please listen until the end, because if there is someone that can inspire you as a human being, first of all, as a woman as a professional, as a mother, as a friend, is Miriam Dr. Z. So Miriam, <laughs> please just take, take, take about a minute or two to introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about you, who you are, what you do, where you are, and then we'll get um, going with some questions that I have for you. First of all, thank you so much. And if someone speaks Spanish, muchas gracias. Es un placer estar aquí con Shiri. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so happy and I am so amazed of what life is about, right? And you mentioned it again and again, and I agree with you, it's about love. And um, this conversation will be about many things, but the, the, the core will be really love, uh, what love means in our lives. Um, well, I am Peruvian, a Latin girl. I grew up there and I went to medical school. I practiced for 10 years for the Navy. And then when I was very successful as a professional and I was lacking of love, right? Uh, coming back to the topic, um, I met my husband that uh, lives in Miami. And after back and forth for a year, um, he proposed uh, when I was visiting him in Miami and I quit my job via Skype. We prepare a wedding in four weeks and we surprise you our quit parents. your job via Skype? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I quit my 10-year job via Skype because, um, yeah, because we had time constraint. So I was here for vacations in Miami where I live now. And, and um, yeah, and my parents were coming four weeks later to visit my sister that was living here. So suddenly all the family will be in the same place at the same time. So we had only four weeks to take decisions. Um, <laughs> And I was not able to go back to Peru and change the visa to make it a, a fiance visa, right? I came legally, but but if, if I will go back to Peru and quit in Peru formally, I will not be able to come for maybe a year, who knows? So we decided to just like, we go for it. And I, yeah, I called my, my boss in Peru and I, I was very grateful because after 10 years of you know, a happy career for the Navy. Uh, I was very grateful, but I just quit and I said, okay, I will start from zero in the US. And that's exactly what I did. And we surprised our parents. They were absolutely um, in shock. Uh, and we have a beautiful wedding. <laughs> and 12 years okay. later, here I am. <laughs> Miriam, mean, it's like, now I really understand that everything that you do is, is non-traditional. It's, 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 it's different and it's outside of the box, right? 
Yes, uh, and, and maybe that's the reason why I fit so well in your uh, podcast, right? Call me crazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it fits terrifically well. <laughs> exactly. So let, let's let's talk about that, you know, the call me crazy and, and, and talk about the shift that you went through um, recently, which again, it's not something that happened like that because I know you've shared with me you always felt that uh, there was a gap, like you didn't feel that you fit properly um, within the space of traditional medicine. So please talk a little bit about that and what uh, and why you decide to open up your own clinic. So when I came to the US, I, I had to decide if I will be or not a doctor anymore, right? I mean, if you will start from zero, you, you could be an architect or a doctor, it will take you the same time, right? Or I could decide to be just a mom, whatever, is, and it's not just a mom, being a mom is probably the most uh, important role in the life of a woman, but... Uh, so I decided to go for medicine again. I got certified as an internal medicine doctor, obesity doctor, and geriatric uh, medicine doctor. So triple board certified and in theory my life was successful again I was able to recover you know my status my good salary and etc a lot of opportunities but as you were mentioning I always feel, feel that I was not a good fit um for very special reasons and, and, and love is again the the the, the the number one reason for this is I love what I do and I love to help and for that, I need to have the independence of decide what is the best for my patients. And sadly, what I felt is that the healthcare system was too focused on uh, profits and protocols, um, you know, money in general, and not so much focus on the well being of my patients. So I was always in a negotiation between what was correct, what was the best, and what was convenient or was the mandatory, you know, or a uh, rule based on, on the system. And it was taking a lot of effort from me uh, to, to find a balance because my, my and, and you talked a lot about the core values, and, and I believe that Yes, my core values were being affected because of that. I, I, I was not able to be myself. Um, so I decided to change. And if you cannot change the system, so you create a new system for yourself, right? I love that. I love it. I love it. And that's, <laughs> that's really taking control of your life, right? Many people just yeah. sit back and they... They wait for things to change or someone to change things for them. And I love how you said it is you create your own system. And that's exactly what, what you did. Right. Yeah. So let, let's talk we, a little we, bit about. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. And, and, and I love what you say, right. To take control of our life and remove ourselves from the victim situation. These things happen to me and I cannot do anything about it. That is not true. We still can do things about things. And we need to remind ourselves that we have that power. This is our life. Uh, maybe challenging, maybe difficult, maybe scary, but this is still in our hands. And we need to take that responsibility, not just become victims and blame anybody else for, their, for why we are not happy with our lives. Yes, that, that's amazing. And, and I'm, I'm going to take you and the audience through your journey the way I saw it, right? Oh. How it appeared, how it appeared to me, right? Recently. So within this, right, you kind of uh, because we had even when we touched base, you you mentioned how I'm not sure, I'm not very happy, I'm not fitting in. Um, and and while this is going through, I get a call from you and you say to me, um, Shiri, I would love to interview you for you to be part of a book that I'm writing. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> where is this coming from, right? So so let's talk about that. Because again, I'm taking you through the journey as I saw it. So now Miriam is calling me because she's writing a book. So what, what happened? What from being a doctor still, you know, trying to decide what are you going to do next? All of a sudden you're taking this course about writing a book. Boom. <laughs> like, well, what happened there? 
um, the news. I read in the news an article of a mother, a physician mother dying by suicide. She left three kids. Uh, one was like just a few months and the other two were around the ages of my kids. And I asked myself, when is my turn? When this will happen to me? Why her, why not me? Uh, and for some reason, uh, I got hurt by that. And, and I don't know why. It's not that I was going through a severe depression or I was really, I mean, I was going into a transition, right? I was trying to ask myself, how do I fit? But I, I didn't know, or I didn't thought that I was so, you know, in a deep place or in a dark place. But even then I had that feeling. I asked myself, is, is, is this happening to me? Is something that will happen to me? And this got even worse when I started to look into the data and, and, and I discovered that 400 physicians die by suicide every year in the US wow. that we are aware of. And this wow. is before COVID and that 60% of physicians are depressed, 65 right now are burned out. So if that will happen to me, it will not be, you know, something surprisingly because it was happening to a lot of people already. It was gonna be another community. statistic. Yeah, and I didn't want to have two boys and my parents and I have dreams, right? And, and, and family that is waiting for me and my patients and my students. So that motivated me to educate myself a little more about burnout, well-being, leadership, emotional intelligence, and, um, and to start to advocate. I thought like, okay, I will not shut up. <laughs> I can't shut up. I, I, I and you haven't since. Ah uh, no, I will continue. <laughs> I have so many other plans coming. Yeah, I love no, it because I I cannot be a witness. It's it's like watching a horror movie, and you know that the end at the end everybody will be dead or something bad will happen, and you keep eating the popcorn and watching it, right? And you allow this to happen. I, I am not like that. In some way, if you think about a servant leader in general, but especially in a physician, right? Or someone in the healthcare system. We promise that we will protect people. We promise that we will help. That's your oath. That we will save life. That's your oath, What is it right? called? A hip hypocritical oath. Yes. And, Which is and, a funny and, name, by the way. It's very you funny, ask me. yes. It's yes, hypocritical. I, yeah, it's this hypocritical. I, I, yeah, I, I will, I probably messing it up in English, uh, but yes. I am too, I think. <laughs> But uh, so if you ignore the suffering, you are not being true to your, you know, to your career, to your values, to who you are as a physician or as a servant leader. So I decided that I will raise awareness. And that's how everything started with an article, a second article, a podcast, and suddenly a, a book. Amazing. Please tell us about um, the 3G cycle book, which again, thank you for including me in there. Um, I really, I, I loved being part of it. So thank you. Oh, tell us. I, and I love having you as part of it. And I still, I am doing the translation to Spanish and I read, uh, I read your, your, your chapter just recently and I had tears again in my eyes. So it, it was a very emotional interview for me. Um, well, the dream cycle started really as a tantrum. I wanted, and, and that was not the name for As a sure. tantrum, I love that. It was a very elegant tantrum uh, where I was trying to open the Pandora so, box. So, so sorry, so all of you who are listening, right? <laughs> Having tantrums when you're as young as we are is a good thing. Of course, right? <laughs> it could inspire you. <laughs> Listen to your tantrums. <laughs> Listen to your tantrums. Emotions are positive. They motivate you. I love it. I love it. Uh, even if they are negative emotions, right? I might um, call this episode Listen to Your Tantrum, by the way. I'm writing it down. <laughs> Maybe, why not? Uh, listen to your heart, right? Um, so yeah, I wanted to bend. I wanted to raise awareness. I wanted to open the Pandora box using that book and 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 talk about burnout and the disaster of the healthcare system and all those things. And that's how this started. What happened in the process is that while I was interviewing other, you know, people, I was finding 
this kind of, it, it became a psychotherapy, uh, you know, psychotherapeutic process for me. I start to heal uh, with the help of each of the amazing individuals that I interview. I started to learn things from them, get inspired. And what happened is that now this burnout book that was a tantrum actually has just one chapter about burnout and has another 20 something chapters about solutions and about hope and about techniques to recover power, right? Recover control of our lives and achieve well being. And um, that book really changed my life in so many levels. Not only that helped me to recover the joy and to recover who I am as a person. I am a positive person. I, I am not the one that does tantrums, right? Not every day at least. And, and, and I don't, I am not destructive. I, I like to construct things, right? I, not, I want to be uh, positive. Um, so I learned tremendously. I recovered control of my life and I, I was able to create a network of people and recover a network of people, right? You and the rest of the of the group uh, that we grew up together uh, through this book. Um, yeah, it, it saved amazing. me. It saved you. Wow. That's uh that's amazing, Miriam. And and I think you you've been able to help and maybe save a lot of people throughout this process, right? As you as you said, it's like you didn't just sat down and, and ate the popcorn right? No. You took action. You took action. You said something needs to be done. Explain um, to the listeners, what is the 3G cycle? Why did you call the book the 3G cycle? What does it mean? So I was trying, I have been resilient all my life, right? I, I have this ability to recover and I, I didn't take it too serious or I didn't give value to that. But during COVID and during the times that we were going through, I, I found myself trying to find out okay, how do I do this? How do I replicate this in a way that is a little more science-based, right? And that I can copy, paste, and teach to others. Uh, so this introspective journey uh, helped me to identify that my life really is not linear. I don't see life linear. I see it as cycles. And, and everything in science is very cyclic, right? Day to night and the cycle of Krebs that give energy in our body and our period for woman, right? Our hormones, so many things. Um, so it was not a crazy idea or too crazy idea to think that life is a cycle. And um, how my cycles look. And, and for me, everything starts with a goal. And goals could be something that you want to achieve, right? I want to get my diploma in this, or it can be something that you dream. I dream with, I don't know, going to Italy or something that is mandated by society. You need to, I don't know, get your license so you can drive, right? And, and, and whatever it is, after you have a goal, a good quality goal, something that you set, you know, appropriately, you need great energy, right? This is the second G. How you move on into the cycle and you continue and you keep going, you have this motivation. And lately, in theory, you should close your cycle, achieving your goal. But many times it doesn't happen, right? Uh, for many reasons. Number one, because you change your mind. Oh, that guy that was so handsome, I want to marry him. And suddenly, oh, I don't like him anymore, right? And so so that, that goal, gone. Uh, sometimes because you try your best, but it doesn't happen. You need to learn something new. You need to develop another skill. But doesn't matter what happened during the cycle, if you decide to learn, if you decide to open your eyes, to open your mind, your heart, to receive help, to, to you know, to grow. So you may or not, may not get the goal, but you will get to the third gig that is exactly grow. You will grow, you will, will become a better version of yourself and you will be able to go to the next cycle being, more prepared, being wiser, right? And and hopefully helping others and becoming a role model for others. I love that. I love that. That is, you can tell that there's, these are years of learning, right? So, and this is something I was just talking recently to someone about this and how when someone looks at you and, you know, you say, oh, you wrote a book, 
right? It's, it's great. People are thinking, oh, you wrote the book, right? And yeah, maybe it took you, you know, a couple of months to do that or a few months to do it. It took you a lifetime to write that book. This, yes, this book, yes. And I know that there are some books that uh, you could write in shorter time, right? You, you, you no, but what I life. mean, what I mean is when I say it took you a lifetime is because all of your experiences yes. and everything that you went through that that's what I mean right yes so yes and I that, agree with that yeah yeah that your because, book your book started decades ago oh yes it just started with me just coming to life you know and, and probably <laughs> it and, and I will tell you something it started even before that uh in some way because uh I have stories of the things that my parents taught me right and that comes from the experience of my parents and their experience of the parents of those that I interview right and many stories of why someone did something right I did it because my dad told me right or because I got educated so this is a generation of generation of knowledge and when you interview yes. more than 30 amazing individuals right from four different continents and with totally different backgrounds not only cultural or, or or economical but also professionally right so you are collecting a lot of amazing knowledge experiences um is i am i feel blessed because uh yes i wrote the book but big part of what is inside of the book really comes from those that participate in the book. And I give them totally the credit for that. Amazing. Absolutely. And so blessed. Listen, you attracted those people to you. So kudos kudos to you for that. Okay. Because the people that you attracted, oh. and guys, you're going to have to read the book and you're going to see that the, the caliber of people that she uh um, that that Miriam actually interviewed. I mean, like myself. No, I'm kidding. No, obviously, no, no, I'm, no, 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 Miriam. No, that's a joke. I'm I'm really talking about the caliber of people. And first of all, for me to be even put in that book with the caliber of people that you have, for me, it's it's an honor. Um, what what's your vision? Because now you're you're in a in a new chapter in your life, right? And it still revolves around medicine, of course. Thank God. But yeah. very different. The, it, uh, so I want you to talk about your vision. What is that vision that you have uh, in terms of medicine? And what are you doing right now that is so different that you were doing before to help people? So I quit my job. Uh, Congratulations. Again, again. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why people now celebrate quitting jobs, but yeah, that's the reaction. No, I don't think everybody, but you know, but we are crazy. So, so I we do are, celebrate. So good for you. That took a lot of courage. That's uh, why I celebrated because it took a lot of courage. Oh, I suffered tremendously. It took me, it took me a lot of time and it took me a lot of, um, emotional preparation and also intellectual preparation because becoming an entrepreneur for me uh, was absolutely not natural right I mean this this was um, yeah I am still <laughs> trying to learn how to do it uh, you need different skills and, and I, I feel like that is very important to understand right being a good physician doesn't make you an entrepreneur doesn't make you a leader right and and that's why we need to keep being humble in whatever we are doing, right? Physicians are not physicians and understand that we don't know everything, right? And, and we are not respected either, I guess. That's, that's why working and having good friends and, and mentors is so important. So I quit my job. I decided to open my own practice. Um, and this is a virtual practice and I do it for a few reasons. One, because it allows me to reach more people. Second, because it allows me to have more flexibility and to practice what I preach, right? To be able to be with family, with my kids, to travel to Peru and, and be with my parents. Um, and what I am doing with this practice is to merge traditional medicine, the type of medicine that I use to practice, but in the way that I want to practice it. If I have to be 60 minutes with a patient, I don't care what my insurance, the insurance will say, I don't take insurance, I will you know, follow what the patient needs. So it will be patient center. The second thing is even I will be prescribing medications like normally, right? But I will focus also in 
this new type of medicine that is more holistic, that includes focusing on diet and exercise in mindfulness meditation, using technology as DNA testing and, and remote monitoring to make sure that I offer the best type of care and that I get most information, right? That now we know that it's available that, that can guide us in, in the right direction. Uh, I'm using precision medicine that for those that don't know the term, precision medicine is really to use the information that you have from a patient, not only symptoms of, of clinical background, but also laboratory tests, functional testing, DNA testing, etc. And you put all that information and you create their capsule with the ingredients that this person needs. And you can do it for nutritional purposes. You can do it for probiotics. It's very different to go and, and, and to, you know, to a pharmacy and say, okay, I will get these multivitamins. Do you really need all these chemicals? Do you really need them in those doses? It's really good for you versus you will get something that is specifically for you. So that reduced polypharmacy, you are not using medications that you don't need. And whatever you are, you really need, you will use it in the appropriate dosage, right? In the appropriate combination and for the appropriate time. You should not start medication today and keep it till you are dead, right? It has to be a, right. an appropriate match of medications. And last but not least, um, I am really, trying to empower patients. My, my goal is to focus on education and empower patients. I share each of these results, each of these numbers, everything with the patient and I educate them so they don't depend on me. At the end, they are with me X amount of hours, right? But the rest of their life, they, they live with themselves. I cannot move with a patient and force them to eat the diet and to do the exercise and to take the pills and to change the way that they sleep or whatever it is. So I empower patients to own their own bodies and their own lives and to take the control that, that they need and that they deserve also. Amazing. Amazing. Um, so different, obviously, than, you know, any any medicine that it, that is more you know the the reactive medicine right rather than than being a pr preventative educational okay. empowering medicine i mean if we can even call it that which is what you're doing with uh, with patients with people right first of yeah. all putting people in the center of everything treating people as people uh and empowering them to uh to lead healthy lives right which is so much of of preventative medicine really and, and I will say that it's more than healthy life because healthy is when you compare being well versus well-being, right? The, the terms, right? But oh, when nice. you talk about this, and it's very interesting because it's a tiny difference, right? Uh, being well is really like or, or having health, right? And, and that's, I mean, I will not complain of being healthy, please, you know? that you want to be more than healthy. You want to be healthy. You want to be happy. You want to feel successful, fulfilled, right? In the different aspects of your life. So being healthy is a very important component, but that will not give you the life that you want. Sadly. Right, you right. Need, you need the extras. And that's why when I evaluate my patients, I check for burnout, I check for well-being, for resilience, of course, depression, anxiety, etc. Because what I want my patient is to kind of graduate from my clinic, being a better version of themselves, not only to have lower cholesterol, right? right. A better right. way. No, it's it's holistic, right? It's holistic it's medicine. Holistic. Yeah. Yeah. It's holistic. Amazing. It's human medicine. I mean, human. That's... Yeah, exactly. I think it's it's the way medicine used to be, <laughs> right? Probably be, when we yeah. take it, like I don't know, two thousand, three thousand years ago, right? Probably. I remember, Shiri. I mean, I remember my my pediatrician in Peru, even right. I mean, or the doctors that used to see my parents or my grandparents. They were part of the family. They they knew each of us, they will come even to your house, they will be invited in the weddings, yes. right? Yes. The, the, that was a different relationship right now. Yeah, it's, it's so cold. Yeah, uh, I know. And I don't blame doctors. Uh, sadly, yeah. uh, the system. I, I blame the system. Exactly, exactly. So, okay, so you want to be invited to weddings. as that That's uh, what you want. That's I'm, why you're doing this. 
I'm I'm very happy to go to weddings. <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, let awesome. me tell you, I am still an introvert. So so all these all these you know hand yeah. movements are being you know what you, sorry like Mira. You know what you know what the problem okay. So let's talk about the introvert, right? Because you know this better than I do. I mean, in terms of when you talk about an introvert, you just, you draw your energy from kind of within, right? That's really an introvert. Yeah. But but let's talk about, you know, you being like the quiet one, Miriam. You were told your whole life that you were quiet and you believed it because you're not. And I've seen that <laughs> evolution in you over the last few years. So there's nothing quiet about you. And, and I applaud you for that, for embracing that. Because I think you were told that when you were little, but you were never that. And then now Miriam is out. Dr. Z, yeah, here she comes. So funny, Watch right? out. Watch out. <laughs> Watch out remember- for this woman. Yeah, you remember, I was a very quiet person. I will not, I mean, I will raise my hand and have a small opinion. But, uh... I know, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. I remember clearly. Yes. And the oxymoron is that you were born in Halloween. Of course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Miriam, what, what keeps you going? Like what really keeps you going at the end of the day? Number one, my kids. I mean, even sometimes I want to strangulate them and, and, and believe me, they drive me crazy. They are adorable. They are so delicious and they know it. Um, I, I believe it's, it's really my kids. It, it's, it's try to educate them and to give them the, the, the knowledge and the experience, right, of you can do better. You can achieve more. You don't need to settle down, you know, and or... or with with the minimum or with something that doesn't make you happy keep dreaming and i i feel like in some way um they are watching me and you said that in your chapter and now i see it because now that my kids are getting older and they can communicate with me it's so funny i hear them and it's like yeah mommy why you will work with a boss that is bad be your own boss, right? They were coaching me, so I quit my job. So uh, yeah, I, I had to do it. Uh, but also, it's it's a. I believe that what keeps me going is moral resilience, right? And it's a term that I describe in my book. And it's this this idea that you need to do what is correct, no matter what, no matter how uncomfortable, how difficult, how maybe. This will push you and isolate you, but you move because this is right. And, and I have this feeling that there's something that I need to do. There is something that I have to say. Uh, I cannot accept that 46,000 individuals die by suicide every year in the US. I cannot accept that 500 of those are between six and 10 years, the ages of my kids. Um, I just cannot accept it. That is I don't want so to watch powerful, them. Miriam, so powerful because um, we accept so many things and we we allow ourselves to accept, right? Uh, and I love how you say it. It's like, I, I won't accept. You know, people are like, well, it is what it is. Those are the numbers. That's the statistics. It is what it is. Be nervous just to hear that. <laughs> I mean, I just... <laughs> I mean, if you will ask me, and I am asking myself, what do I hate? What what I cannot tolerate by standards? I don't understand how you can see others suffering, how you can see injustice, and you can just ignore it. I just, I can't. And the other day I was telling my dad, this is your fault. I'm going to challenge in times because you made me like this. You should educate me better. <laughs> my dad was like, this is not my fault. That's you, awesome. you were like this. Is, you were a girl. You were trying to save the world. I was trying always to save the world. Yeah. yeah. Like, and you know what? And, and many people call you crazy because of that. And many people, you know, that that's just, yeah. And, and it's, because one of the things that definitely drives me crazy is when people tell me, well, you know, that's everybody's doing it. You know, what's her, everybody does it. Everybody this, everybody that. I mean, yeah, exactly. And that that's the problem, right? And it could be the bystander. It could be the people just the herd mentality, right? Yeah. So 
Yeah, I, I, I know we, we share that, uh, that, that passion because we are passionate about that. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yes. it's very interesting. We, we share those genes, right? Uh, in, in different <laughs> ways. Um, I was actually, I was laughing the other day. I was reading one of your uh, LinkedIn posts about soccer. Uh, we call it football, right? Uh, and I, it brought me memories of you playing soccer, right? And 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 being so good because you were spectacular, right? Thank you. And, still and am. Still way, am. You are. Well, I'm sure you are. <laughs> I, I I have absolutely no doubt. Uh, on the other extreme, I was kicked out of any uh, sport, right? In a very polite way, go and paint, go and run, go and hide, right? They keep score, keep like, score, keep score. Yeah, yeah, keep score. I, I was terrified of the balls, right? I will see them and I will be hiding, totally terrified. But you you and Jenny, you used to play, right? Soccer, amazing. <laughs> and and since you were a girl, right? And, and there are things that we see, I believe that they come with us, right? Uh, you were advocating for your role in this world, right? For who you are, doesn't mind if you are a woman or or or, or not. If it doesn't mind, it's like you had a place for you that was waiting, and you make sure that, <laughs> that you will fill that place, right? <laughs> that you are going there. Absolutely. Uh, but not always happen like that, and and I believe that I am the the the, the example of that right you can be on the quiet side you can be on the timid side and, and that should not be an excuse for us to keep hiding right or to keep um avoiding the discomfort we can we can educate ourselves we can create new skills right develop new yeah. skills yeah. uh so yeah. so not nobody should say i cannot do this yeah, we all yeah. can do it. We can, we can do it. And um, it reminded me that the, the soccer, right? Because the soccer <laughs> is that I was doing a tapping session, right? With, with a coach, I was doing a tapping session and, um, you know, we, soccer came, right? Football came and, and me, you know, trying to be, always be part of uh, one of the boys and, and, and getting to the team and, and be chosen and be, be allowed to play. Never mind, Right. Yeah. And one of the things that came out of that tapping session is, well, I'm going to, what would you tell Shiri at that age, right? Shiri, 12, 11 years old, right? And one of the things like create your own team and stop asking permission or waiting to be allowed into it. And I think, you know, that for me, those have been defining moments where I've, I've been creating my own team, right? Instead of, of waiting to be let in. And I think that's, a lot of what you've done right now in your life is okay. I'm not. I'm not gonna create. You know, I'm not gonna be part of this team that I don't really fit in and asking permission and waiting to be let in, waiting to change those things in the in that team. But rather, you know what? No, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna create my own team of of medicine and 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 do things how I see them right for me, for society, for my children, and everybody else. And that is so important, right? And, and I believe that probably the message that we want to share, right, to, to others is we can do it. It's in our hands. Don't wait for permission to be yourself. Don't be, wait for permission to achieve your dreams. Uh, don't yeah. be your worst enemy. We, we already have society to tell us all the yeah. things that we cannot do, right? But inside of us, we need to tell ourselves, you can do it, right? Exactly. You need to be your cheerleader. Yeah. And when you are not your best cheerleader, look for friends, right? And look for support because we don't need to go through life alone. And we don't need to go through challenges without help um and and i i learned this i i really i have learned this um not necessarily in the easy way uh but mm -hmm. i if i will be able to go back on time the same way that you you did during this this exercise i will probably tell myself let people to help you right there you go yeah exactly and just a hundred percent. I mean, just the fact that you, it's interesting because let people help you. You based your whole book. You wrote a whole book on people helping you, you reaching oh, out, yes. which is, yes. which is amazing. That's awesome. You, I mean, you didn't wait. And this is what I, I call it in, in, 
in my book and I talk about it on my podcast, don't wait for that permission slip. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and go for things. And you know what? Don't be afraid. What's the worst scenario? A no? You know, you have it already. So, so yeah. go for it. <laughs> exactly. and, and you were talking about the people that I interview and what is funny because, I mean, some of them, they are absolutely fancy, right? I mean, one is better than the other. It's, it's impressive. I, I, I don't know those individuals. Uh, many of them, I never saw them in my life, right? And I just, ask to contact them through LinkedIn, not through someone. I just click connect, mm -hmm. you know, and I invite them to connect. They accept. And then I told them my story. I am a doctor trying to save the world and I am writing a book. And I just, if you don't mind, I would like to interview you. And when they will say yes, I will start jumping like a, you know, crazy person um, in my chair celebrating that someone said yes and after almost 30 yeses or more I was impressed and it's not only that I learned that you need to ask so you get what you want and not be afraid of the no's but also believe in kindness right not everybody around you is here to screw you or to make your life you know, <laughs> difficult. There's a lot, there are a lot of people around that are in the same place, right? That they are also 100%. suffering, that they are also in need and that they are also willing to help others. Yeah. So if you don't ask, you will never know. A hundred percent. And you know what? And this is something that I've, I've taught my, my children and I teach, you know, my students and people that I coach it is the most successful people usually that will help you and lend your hand. And that's the reason why they're successful, right? So yes. as we're talking, you know, and you know how passionate I am about networking and I'm always talking about networking. Um, you should reach out to people that are successful because look look what happened. Yes, so that, that's yes. lesson number one. And I'll share something with you. Just last night, late last night, I actually sent a message on LinkedIn to Jay Shetty. Think like Tell a mom. Tell me that he answered, really? Wait, I, it was not yet, not yet, but I did. I sent him a message because I really want to talk to him about, you know, the speaking engagements and, uh, you know, this whole idea of the Dharma and everything. And I told him that's my Dharma, right? To be on stages and inspire and impact people. Like, I just want, just give me this microphone on stages, right? And I, I wrote that message to him, right? And I, I didn't even think twice, I was actually reading about something. I didn't know he was on LinkedIn. I said, I'm like, oh, no, I'm going to connect with him. But again, this is because I'm so used to connecting with people and I'm networking. I'm a master networker that, yes. And you know what? He might answer it and he might not. It doesn't matter. I have a story for you. You will laugh. So I will, I don't use chat. You know, DPT, how, what's the name? Chat, Chat DPT. DPT, come on, DPT. my best oh, my friend. friend. Okay, yeah, my I, best friend. I, I total, I mean, to the point that I will I teach you to use talk. it. You will love Chat GPT. Don't oh. talk about her like that. She's great. I'll teach She's you. She's great. Okay. Well, I, but I was trying to get Oprah's address so I can send her my book. Right? So it came to my mind that maybe this, you know, interesting lady will help me so I went I created I call her the missus and... by the way <laughs> and I asked her and she answers me something like I cannot give you a uh, personal information but this is the address of her company so I completely believe I put my book I you know I wrote Good. like a long dedicatory for her and I email it Two weeks later, I received back the book. Seems that the address didn't exist, right? <laughs> I love it. I love but it. But I try. At I least love I try. It. Try Santa Barbara. Is. She she has a house in Santa Barbara. Try try an address there. That's great. Better yet, just go knock on her door. And give it to her. Yeah, Listen, yeah. do something crazy. Do something crazy. Yes. What then? <laughs> That's awesome. You Miriam. never, you never. Well, now I, I'm living close to Messi, so who knows? That's my other dream. I hey, mean, there you go. Hey, good for you. Good for you. There you go. Tell him I say you hi. You never know. You absolutely never know. By the <laughs> way, his story is beautiful. His story is one of those that will fit my book so beautifully, right? There you Resilience, go. Go. Grow. Knock on Amazing. his door, interview him. Go, go for it. 
Go for it. If someone knows Messi, please, you know. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Miriam, one last question. Last question. What would be your last words to your children? I will not use my own words. I will copy paste my boy, my seven year. Well, he was seven nice now. This is your life. This is your choice. This is your journey. Enjoy. I love it. I remember that you share that with me. I love it. I love it. Miriam, thank you so much. De verdad que gracias. Muchísimas gracias por oh, estar aquí conmigo. I loved it. Loved it. I can't wait to see you, um, you know, in, in, in Miami. Maybe you'll come here to Toronto, but I know I'll be in, oh, I'll be in Miami Canada. before you come here, for Probably sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> o en Perú. En Perú. Perú. <laughs> Miriam, thank you so much. So much love to you. Thank you for being here and, and sharing thank your you. journey. I know you're inspiring a lot of people. Continue to inspire. And I'm going to drop your coordinates, your contact information, so anyone can reach you, uh, especially people in the U.S. and outside of the U.S., people in the U.S., if you want to have a session with Dr. Z, I highly recommend her. Thank you, Miriam. Muchas gracias. Muchas Love gracias. You. Me too. <laughs>